Hello friends, this is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Realtor, and today we're going to talk about my 8 secrets of selling your Toronto condo assignments. Okay, what are assignments? Let's say you're in a situation where you brought a pre-construction condo and now you don't want to close on it for any reason. Maybe you want to take some money out, some profit, uh, perhaps uh, somebody else wants it to buy it off you, or you just can't close, or you moved, or you had a baby, or your life situation has changed. So you want to reassign your condo, you want to reassign the contract the agreement of purchase and sale uh, from yourself to someone else, that person will come in, pay you back for the deposit, pay you your markup, your profit, and then continue the deal uh, against the developer and basically buy the unit from the developer and close it. Instead of you, they will close on it, okay? So that's an assignment. When you, buy, when, you, when you sell your assignment, you do not have to close on it because the other person that is buying the assignment from you will buy it, okay? And they're going to close on it. So... These are, that's the main reason why people want to sell their assignments, take profit out, and they don't want to close, or both. And let's see how you can do that too. Okay, so I got some uh, cheat sheet here. Uh, eight secrets of selling your Toronto condo assignment. So uh, my secret number one is how to price. Okay, so first of all, before you sell anything, you need to learn how to price. So in order to see to how to price, you got to do a couple of things. One is you got to be within the market range, but you got to be below your competition. So in the assignment case, your immediate competition is actually the developer who sold you the condo, the vendor, okay? So let's say they sold you the condo for $700,000, um, and now they're, they're pricing the same condo at eight fifty. There's a margin, there's a markup of $150,000 here, okay? So you want to offer less than the developer, but more than the, market, more than the market price. So how do you find the market price? You go to a site like assign-condo.com. By the way, there's a new site that we're about to launch. You can kind of a soft launch here. Everything is working just nice. And you can look for similar properties or property the same page, uh, the same building, um, that you can compare and see how, how your property, how your assignment compares to. So, for example, if you have better exposure and higher, higher floor, which means better view, um, you may be able to charge more for it. But if your unit is inferior to a similar unit, you may want to adjust your price below those units to reflect which unit is better than the other. And of course, all, all these, what's best and what's not so good, um, it's an eye of the beholder, okay? Usually the market will agree on what's better and what's not as good. Nonetheless, you know, it's people with people, so the people decide, okay? Uh, you'll see Captain Research Realty here. Um, one way to find assignments is to go to my Twitter, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan, either scroll down or simply put on Twitter, Yossi Kaplan assignments or assignments and see what comes up. Okay, so Twitter, yeah, still recording here. Um, Twitter is uh, looking at uh, everything with Yossi Kaplan and the word assignments, plural, because I typed it, and then you can basically look at what's available and start following these links and see if... Uh, Anything makes sense to you. There's another article that I wrote, uh, Six Tips of Buying and Selling Assignments. Okay, so you can follow that and get some information of what's available in the market, uh, what are the costs, who are you competing against, so on and so forth, to know what's going on. Another good resource that I have is my own website, UrbanTorontoRealty.com. And this is my main website. I've been posting for many, many years, about 10, maybe more years now, into this website. So just go in here and type up. Uh, assignment and see what comes up okay and you never know what's going to come up maybe that piece of information is the one you need so new assignments at Bisha 60 Colburn 50 Red Path King West assignments how much can you get for the assignment so you get more information about assignments here another way to do it is to go and look at the assignment here which is the category assignment okay and they'll give you other information like Minto Long Branch or 488 or 1717 Avenue or other units or e-condos, which are still relevant. Obviously, assignments, unless they sell, or the building closes, they're no longer an assignment. They become a resale. Okay. The fourth um, resource I have for you is another website of mine, YorkvilleLuxuryRealEstate.com. And in this website, I usually put higher-end properties. So you remember last week I posted $27, million, uh, $27 Toronto million dollar listings. Uh, but here, you're going to find, like, 609 Avenue, condos assignments for sale because we have some assignments here. Now, the article itself may not tell you exactly which unit it is uh, because v various things that I talked about in other videos 
um, but it'll give you an idea of what things are going for, what to expect, and what your presentation is going to look like. Now, if you want any specific information, all you got to do is just fill the contact form or hit the contact button here and just hit the contact, go to the contact, send me an email or call me, the number is right there, and say, hey, I have an assignment for sale. I'm thinking of uh, maybe selling my assignment. I'm not sure if this is the right time. Should I wait? Should I post it now? Uh, how much should I ask for it? How much are your fees? How long is it going to take me? You know, all these questions, um, just ask me and I'll tell you. Okay? Uh, the next resource I have for you to find the price of your assignment, or to find the price of what other people are asking for, is my other website, yossikaplan.com. And although there's a new website, I'll be putting a lot of information here quite quickly. And if you simply use the search, the mm -hmm. magnifying glass, mm -hmm. for assignment, mm -hmm. there you go. Um, and we're just going to hit the enter here, or the magnifying glass, and you'll get more information about assignments, or assignments uh, for sale, uh, or videos about assignments, on and on and on. Uh, so for example, in this video here, that is posted as a post on my website, you're going to have some assignment information because the word assignment came up because it was tagged as assignment. So there's assignment information in here too. We'll say investing strategy 2019 to 2020. Okay. Um, one more very important resource is actually I'm keeping a live database of assignments for sale. When you go to urbanrealtytoronto.com and it doesn't matter which website you come from, you can hit on the side here bar or at the bottom, at the, at the footer, and under special searches, go down to assignments. And when you click this, it will bounce to a live search for assignments. And this search usually returns between 50 and 80 uh, units. Right now, we, it says 52 plus homes. And it shows you the assignments on the system. So this is on the MLS system, on the IDX system, on the VAL system, inside Search Realty. And then the other system is connected to this one. So it may not be all the assignments, but there's quite a few here. You can get a good idea of what's available to sell to, for sale here uh, that, that is marked, tagged as, assi as assignments. Page crash for me, I'll go back. Okay, so um, this is what we have now. So how to price your assignment. And the most thing that you want to do is remember is you, you, what you want to do is, can I go, I'll, I'll redo this search here. Aha. Uh -huh. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you're pricing reasonably. So if you say, you know, my unit's worth a million dollars, but everyone else is still selling at 800, it's not going to work because people are going to do the search and realize your price it just doesn't make any sense. So you want to sell your assignment below the developer because people always gravitate towards the developer, but, you know, above what you paid for. Give yourself enough margin, enough markup, to make it worth your while, your profit is worth your while, and it's also worth your while of the buyer that is going to buy the assignment from you and not go to the developer. Okay, and, and about that, I'm going to get back to that in a minute. Okay, number two I want to talk about is create a professional presentation. When I'm talking about professional presentation, you want to make sure all the information is there, that all your pictures are sharp, that you don't put like a fax copy paste, you know, I went through the fax a million times floor plan because all those things exist, okay? So lazy agents, I've been talking a lot about lazy agents, uh, here to lose. So look at, you know, before you do anything, if you do it by yourself, do the best job you can. If it works for you, why not? If you're using an agent, tell the agent, show me where your listings are. Show me your marketing material. Show me your flyers. Uh, show me your ads. Uh, show me your websites. Show me where you post your stuff. Do you have a newsletter? How many people on it? Do you have Twitter? How many people on it? Okay, on and on and on. And then they'll say, yeah, my name is Yossi Kaplan. I have a Twitter. And I got uh, 2,154 followers at the moment. I've tweeted 2,714 times. So it's quite active. And we're moving along here. We got a lot of, a lot of posts here. Okay, so that's a good sign. Have you done any assignments? Ask your agent. Yes, I have. I've done it over here, I've done it over there. You know, have you had any problems? Of course, let me tell you about the things to watch out for. Okay, so that's a good agent, that's a good professional that they know what they're talking about. Obviously, any agent would like to take the business, you know, every professional would like the business, but you gotta find the right person that's perfect for you. 
And the first thing they need to know what they're doing and they need to create a really good presentation because you're competing with developers that are using you know, fancy graphic uh, artists and uh, advertising agencies that specialize in condos. So you know, people are used to the information that comes in the demo, that come in the, in the um, developers' marketing materials and they walk into these demo units, you know, the, the, the made sites and, and the um, demo suites, model suites. So you gotta, but you don't have anything to show. All you got is paper. So your presentation has to be very, very good. See what I'm saying? Okay. Number three, and by, by the way, there's more information uh, on the website. This is going to be on urban, uh, urbanrealtytoronto.com. That's where I'm posting. So there'll be the video plus the entire text of everything that I've written this morning, about 1,500 words, a lot more detailed with all the links that you need on urbanrealtytoronto.com, this site. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to I talk about is parking, lockers, and extras. Okay, with assignments, you know, it's not like you got an MLS because there's no MLS. You cannot post on MLS. Uh, there's no a standard structured way that you can uh, you can show your assignment unless you go to a website like Assign Condo, and that's what we're doing here. We're creating a structured way to enter all the information into the database and to present it in such a way that you can start getting a good idea of what's going on here. So in this case, uh, the page for 488 University will load, and if there's a video, it will come here, and here you get the information, very similar to MLS, property type, city, square footage, bathroom, bedrooms, where it is, all that stuff. Then you get the information detail, maybe a link. If any floor plans, like this one, will be right here, you get a map with this unit, and then you can click around and compare it to other assignments in the system, for example, this one, and of course, the form to contact. So that's good presentation. And this kind of presentation will tell you if there's parking, if there's locker, if there are extras, if there are balconies, what the size, you know, so here it says large balcony, southwest view, high floor, one bed, on and on and on and on. So it gives you a good idea. So you have to include all you have to include all the little details here and make sure. Uh, is there parking? Is there a locker? What about the balcony? Are there terraces? How large are there? Um, and of course, we want to know the upgrades, special features, discounts, rebates. Uh, some developers will offer you a TV when you close. All that information has to be included. So assigncondo.com actually includes all these things. When you go to uh, sell my condo, if you wanted to sell, you want an evaluation, and you fill this form, this form will actually ask you all these questions. You know, what's the description? Upgrades and extras, discounts, you know, all the rebates, all the stuff you got. So original price, when you bought it, what was your deposit structure, on and on and on. So the reason it's going to ask you all, all that information so it can create a proper file so you can sell your assignment better. Okay? It makes more sense because imagine you say, yeah, I have something to sell, but then people have to ask you, okay, so what is it? Uh, how many bedrooms you have? Uh, do you have parking? Uh, what for? You know, if you give all the information right up front and that's my thing, like, I share the information with you because the person that wants the information will say, that is the one I want, and will go for it. The person does not want that information, not that unit for them, will appreciate that, will appreciate that the straight up, sincere, honest, you know, fully disclosed way that we present will come back. So the next unit, maybe they're going to like that one. And they're going to keep coming back because they know that Yossi presents full, fully disclosed information about a unit. Which is very, very important because we want to give, we want to be straight up and really be what we do best, which is information brokers for a very specific topic, real estate in a, investing in a very specific market, Toronto. Very, very specific. But like an expert, like you know, a surgeon that 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 puts back the fingers that fell off, or you know, whatever that painter that does this type of art, whatever it is. Okay, so that's our specialty make sure all the little details are checked. Okay. Uh, number four out of the eight is pick the right assignment agent and lawyer. What do I mean by that? So, you know, there are 55,000 agents in Toronto. There are many, many lawyers in Toronto and really you have a choice of using so many people. So how do you pick them? Okay, so when I go out and pick a professional, the first thing I want to do, I want to know is, can you do the job? And of course, they're all going to say, yes, I can do the job. But the question is, can you do the job? Have you done the job? Can you show me 
uh, jobs that you've done. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. I, I don't care, but you know, if you've done an assignment, you understand the principle. If you've done a few assignments, you for sure understand the principles. And if you have some posts about it or made a video about it, or I can see some ads you've made, I know you're engaged. I know that you care for this topic and you're fully versed in it. And that's what I'm looking for. And the same with the lawyer, because and, and there's a whole section coming up for the lawyers here, but I'll say this in section number four is you got to ask the lawyer, have you done assignments? Yes, no. Do you like doing assignments? If they start going, oh my God, assignment is a big problem, da, 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 da. That's not the lawyer for you. If the agent goes, you know, assignments are dangerous, they cannot close, and that's not the person for you, okay? If they're positive about it, say, yeah, let me help you. Absolutely. Continue further. Investigate further. But if the person is like, ah, it's probably not something they're comfortable with, find the professional that can do that for you, you know? The guy can use a jackhammer, he can make big holes, but the dentist, you want something very, very precise. So he's got a tiny, tiny, tiny jackhammer. You know what I'm saying? you got to find the right person for the job. It's very, very important. So the presentation, the, the information, and the right person all make the package appealing to your future buyer. You can't miss on any of these things. Okay. Number five is 10 your marketing. That's a Grant Cardone thing. Uh, he's a real estate investor from Miami. Uh, very famous because kind of abrasive on YouTube, but you know, there's, he's good. He's doing his thing and he's got 10x. And his thing is 10x everything you do. 10x your life, 10x your effort, 10x your profit, 10x everything. Make it bigger, better all the time, but be focused. How do I make it 10 times better? So what do I mean by this? I mean, you cannot leave a stone unturned. So you got to be on assignedcondo.com. You got to be on Urban Realty Toronto. You got to be on a search system. You gotta be on York Villachi Real Estate. You gotta be on Yossi Kaplan. You gotta be on YouTube. There's a lot of videos, many videos on YouTube. I mean, look at this. It even knows Yossi Kaplan assignment because so many people are searching for Yossi Kaplan assignment. So there you go. So many videos that are have the word assignment in them or the tag or the category or they talk about assignments, okay? And you notice now there's other people come, but still there's more you'll see coming because there's so because I've done probably you know 20 or more videos uh, either about assignments or talking about assignments or mentioning assignments. So that's what you want. And Google, of course, thinks that this is the one. Okay, so um, 10x your marketing. You gotta make sure your marketing is good. That also includes classified social media, all that stuff. Now, social media, you know. There's a lot of trolling going on, a lot of neg negativity going on. There are a couple of good groups, though, that people share information, and they're not negative. And those are the, group you wanna be, the groups you want to be in, or maybe they're agent-only groups, and then you can ask your agent. You can say, Yossi, make sure you put me on the agent assignment groups. Okay, sure, no problem. So that's what 10x marketing is, okay? Make sure, on, you, make sure you're on these systems, because these index systems, you know, they get scanned by Google. Uh, this is the system here creates a page. It creates a unique page right here, slash property, slash 488 University Avenue. So this is a unique page for this assignment particularly. And because it's a unique page for this one, Google can scan it. Very, very important because then Google can find you. Okay. Um, number six is working with assignment offers. I'm just going to move through the visual just to make it more interesting, okay? Um, but working with assignment offers, what does that mean? If you're selling the assignment, okay, and the assignee comes with their agent and they send you an offer, you need to understand how to work with these offers. They're not like getting offers when you sell your resale, you know, the house you lived in for so many years or your condo. So that's what I mean. Okay, here's what I mean. And what I mean is assignments could be very tricky because a lot of people will try to take advantage of you agents will try to take advantage of you uh, lawyers will try to take advantage of you other buyers and sellers for sure will try to take advantage of you, you know it's kind of a it's kind of a bit of a wild west situation assignment but it's not so regulated uh, nobody's counting how many assignments are done nobody really knows except for maybe Canada revenue but maybe done a, they don't have been counted I don't know um, so you gotta you gotta watch out so the first thing you got to understand, you're going to get a ton of low-ball offers. 
people are going to throw offers at you really, really low. You know, you bought your car for 450, you sell it for 600, and somebody's throwing your offers in 499. Should you take it? Well, you know, that depends, but if your unit is really, really good and other people are selling for 600 and all, all, all else is similar, you should probably get around that price, okay? So don't worry about the lowball offers. Maybe they're just testing you. Maybe they have no money. Or maybe they're just like looking for a good deal. I don't know. But use the right agent to work with them and to find out if they can actually purchase or not. Um, the other thing is really, really important to understand, and this is trickery. It's hard to estimate if the offer is real. Okay? What I mean by real, I received so many offers where the buyer did not even intend to close. Okay? So why would they do that? Uh, number one, they're delusional. They're just crazy. They just basically want to feel that they can put offers. Number two is they got ill advice. Okay? Somebody told them, yeah, you should do this. Maybe you can flip it again and make more money. Uh, maybe, I don't know, somebody like, I don't know. They got, they got ill advice. They, they, they don't have enough information. They, they, did, they didn't think about it. Or maybe they don't have the tools to think about it. They didn't hire the right people to help them. Okay? So you don't know if the offer is real. There are ways to find if the offer is real, um, but you need to make sure that offer is real because if you're going to reassign to someone who cannot close, that's big trouble. Okay? That's a whole other video. Um, it's hard to know if the buyer can actually close. So the buyer can become really cra crazy with money, but they can be maybe not crazy, but have no money too. So you got to watch out for these things and kind of do your best to vet the buyer and to really make sure they intend to close, they can close, they want to close, they're going to close. Okay? Don't do the deal unless you're absolutely sure they're going with it. Um, this is not so nice, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Agents write terrible con contracts which are complicated and preventative. And what I mean by that is a lot of agents, they go in a, in a system in the clauses and they add every clause they can because they think they're doing a good job. No! You just complicated things unnecessarily. A good offer is offer that is real, that is intended to be, to be worked with, and that is just the minimum necessary. You do not need to add anything that is already in the law. But because a lot of people do not understand the law, they just add all these clauses that if you ever really ask a professional law person, they say, it's unnecessary. That's already included overall in Ontario. So don't do that, okay? And if you don't know how to put a, an assignment offer, don't do the offer or get some help. Okay, from someone who knows how to do it, a veteran agent, a lawyer, someone who understands assignment and done it before successfully. Not only the agents complicate stuff, the lawyers too. And I'm going to get to the lawyer section in a minute. But the lawyers like to just, you know, they change a the sentence. And when you look at it, I don't know. I mean, it's achieving the exact same thing. There's no logical difference here. But, you know, they've done some work. Watch out for these people, okay? I'm not saying they're all bad, but a lot of them, they get a good offer. The agent did a great job. They did a good offer. The lawyer has to complicate things unnecessarily. Two more things about working with assignment offers. Um, there are no, and this is very important, there are no standards for offers, and, and there's a form, finally, like a year ago, showed up a form on TRIP, but it's not very good. I don't like it because there's a lot of holes in it, the verbiage, the language, and the definitions are kind of iffy. Uh, Treb is not consistent. Sometimes you'll say a signer, sometimes a seller. You know, they haven't really gone, they haven't done the work to make sure that all these forms are unified. Sometimes the seller signs on the left, sometimes on the right. It's not good enough. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a good step in the right direction, but there were no upgrades in the past year and doesn't look like they're doing any. So the contracts themselves are not good and there are no templates. So you got to, you know, if, if you've done a good assignment, if you use a good contract, you can use it as a basis, but each assignment is different. So the contract you used before may not be the same one you want to use. So you got to work together with the lawyer 
to make sure that everything that you need is there and what you donate is not there. Just as important. Okay? The last thing I want to talk to you about is calculations. They're risky, they're complicated. And because of all the verbiage and different words and definitions, things can get murky. So you got to make sure everyone understands everything. It takes more work. Assignments take more work, a lot more work and time, and concentration and focus than a resale deal. Okay? Number seven, avoid bad lawyers. Now, we're not going to troll here and start like in the comments, oh, the lawyers, we're not going to do that, okay? Everyone's doing the best they can, but you got to hire the right people. And some people are the right people for the job, and some are not. So you need to interview the lawyer, even if you use them 50 times before. Have you, Mr. Jones, or whatever your name is, Mr. Lawyer, have you done an assignment? Yes. How do you feel about it? Ask him how, how they feel about it. If they start to like, ah, you know, that's not the right person for you. If they're like, it's risky and tell you horror stories, no. Find a lawyer that can say, I can do this. I know the pitfalls. I know what I need to watch out for. And I've done it before. And we can do this and I will help you. That's the person you want to find. That's the person that will help you. The agent and the lawyer, they both need to be positive and ready and experienced and willing to go the extra mile for you. If, you know, the lawyer is gone from Friday 3 p.m. until Monday at 9 a.m. and you're going to run a deal, that's not good. Ask the lawyer, look, my agent is doing this for me on the weekend. Will you do that too? Yes, great. No, I'll find someone else who can do that. At the end of the day, we all deliver services to you, buyers, sellers, investors. There's a lot more information about the lawyers. Um, I'm going to leave it out of the video. Go read it in the article on UrbanRealtyToronto.com. There's a whole big section there. Okay, number eight, that's my last point about the secrets of selling your Toronto condo assignments is closing, closing your assignment deals, okay? So closing an assignment is kind of complicated because really you kind of close in twice. First, you have a contract, you have an agreement with the person who's gonna buy your assignment from you, the assignee, you're the assignor, they're the assignee, they're gonna buy from you, they give you a deposit, you calculate how much you paid the developer, the, the vendor, the developer. Do you have to pay any more? What do you have to pay on occupancy? What's the deal with the developer? Uh, do you get any money back, cash back, discounts, rebates, all these things, okay? So all this has to be in the closes. You've got to document it properly. It's easy to, under easy to understand. You've got to put in your calendar. You've got to make sure the money is there. You've got to make sure the mortgage is okay. All these things have to be like detailed and then executed on flawlessly and don't forget you have another closing your second closing which is the actual closing of the unit with the vendor the vendor means the person who sold you the the the, the unit the development the developer okay so that's your second closing so it's happening twice first i'm closing with the person who's going to buy the paper from me the assignment and second they're going to close with the developer now if they can close it comes back to me you know that right if the assignee can close, I need, I need to close on it, so I've got to make sure that that's why I've vetted, I've vetted everyone really well. I made sure everything's good, and I make sure closing is good, and I want to keep an eye on the closing, because usually closing, there's more funds to be released to me. Usually it's the last portion of the profit. Okay, uh, and again, more on this in the article, with the link below. So I'm going to summarize the eight secrets I told you about selling your Toronto uh, condo assignment. Okay, so number one, you got to price it right. Less than your competition, whether it's a developer or maybe someone else, and it's got to be priced right to the market. Okay, number two, create a professional presentation. Make sure all the information is there, just like the developer had it, because that's what people expect. Number three, parking locker extras. Okay. You got to document everything, and everything you got in that deal has to be clearly explained and identified. Again, the salesperson for the developer is not there. You and your agent got to do that work. So make sure you provide your agent all the information they need, and then they can communicate that. Okay. Uh, number four, pick the right assignment agent and lawyer. The people who work with you on assignment are crucial. Okay. So pick the right people that have positive attitude towards this this business and can deliver. Number five is 10 extra marketing. Okay, so ask Yossi to put it on Twitter. 
Ask Yodi to, Yossi to put it on Sankana.com. Ask Yossi to put it on Urban Realty Toronto.com. Ask Yossi to put it on his MLS system. Ask Yossi to put it on Your Free Luxury Real Estate. On Yossi Capital.com. On YouTube. On social media. On and on and on and on and on. Okay? Make sure you 10x your marketing. You cannot miss a point. And there's more sites. I have a list. Actually, I have a cheat sheet, a checklist, a to-do list. And in the office, then I send it to the office and they send it to all their contacts. Plus, of course, the mailing lists, the word of mouth, uh, I know someone, the little quiet links that I have right here in my phone that you can know about, okay? But these are people, investors say, you know, if you find this type of investment, I'm interested. And maybe that could be yours, okay? Number six is working with the offers. Be very careful working with the offers. You've got to vet the offers, but you've got to make sure you can take this offer to the end. Uh, number seven is avoid bad lawyers. Lawyers with negative attitude toward assignments should not be used, okay? Use them for whatever they're good at, but if they don't like assignment, find someone who does because they're natural, be more positive about it, and, and they want to they wanna close it just as much as you do, okay? And number eight is the closing. Remember that you're closing with the assignee, and then the assignee has to close with the vendor, which really, that's the only... Only when the final, final, final closing registration, as we call it, has happened, you're off the hook. So that's what it is, okay? So these were, were my eight secrets, very important eight secrets, of selling your Toronto condo assignment. Thank you very much. That's it.